stronger surge of oxytocin from our animals than we even do from our children. And certainly after a certain point, I, our children may start to really not be in ways that can help them. <laughs> but there's your back doing it. Coming home, you come home from work, you've been in competition with humans all day. They haven't been very nice many times. And there's the dog wagging its tail and smiling and <laughs> like giving grace in the world. That is a huge boost for you and a releaser of oxytocin. Just eye contact releases oxytocin when you look at your dog. And again, I say dog just because the studies have been done. I'm a cat. I have two cats. <laughs> and I, and, and I, I'm sorry to say I think sometimes the best cat and dog I've ever had is a cat. <laughs> but they're like dogs. That's a lot of, of it, is that I always had dogs when I got cats. I treated them like it. And guess what? They behaved an awful lot like it. Anyway, that's an aside. But so. One, one of the things that uh, they showed in humans now when they do these studies, and I'm glad to say we're on the human level with it now, is you can inhale oxytocin. Now, in clinical settings, you have to inhale like three tablespoons. It's really not a very fun thing to do. <laughs> but they do it, and they've shown that oxytocin increases trust, and it increases altruism, and it also makes men better able to read nonverbal I expression. Women are notoriously better at it than men. But with the boost of oxytocin, men, and you just show them pictures of faces, just the eye region, with very subtle changes in eye expression, they are much better at it, correctly interpreting what those signals mean. Now let's think about that with animals. You're working solely on a nonverbal, well not solely, Animals have a lot of actual digital vocal communication, but it's nonverbal. And uh, so people with a, that, whose brains make a lot of oxytocin, and it does vary in humans, and Jerry, it's a lot of your mother's health that nurtured that in you. Obviously, you had that naturally, you may, but, but uh, you may have inherited it from her. People have different levels of oxytocin that they make in their brains, and it can be nurtured early on in life through just what his mother did, and just what, and we can nurture it in each other, and make people more sensitive and more caring and more aware. You know, you see the people with their dogs going down the street, and a mother will come along, and, and the kid, of course, naturally reaches out when the mother grabs the kid back. He says, no, 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 no. You don't know that dog, that dog, you know. That is a signal that we don't want to send necessarily. There's other ways to do that. And so I hope that we can we can always be nurturing oxytocin and the complex brain chemistry that it releases in our children to make our children much more sensitive and much more aware of how to look at animals. Because once you know how to look at an animal, all your work gets easier. Um, so, what oxytocin does is it, it, it makes us more sensitive to reading social signals and it calms us down. It is the epicenter of a newly discovered anti-stress chemistry in the brain. Again, tons of money and research went into studying stress. No one looked at anti-stress. Well, think about it. They almost seem to have thought that Calmness and a sense of well-being is just something that happens when you're not freaking out. That can't be. We would blow up if that were the case. Our hearts and our brains would explode because that's what happens. If you stay in stress too long, you have hypertension and stroke and you die. We are social mammals. We don't like to be around very nervous people. Very nervous people make us nervous. Very shy people won't connect. It is not conducive to being a social mammal and to survival. So it does make sense that the same chemistry that promotes social behavior does it by first creating this sense of calm. Now when I learned all this a long time ago, I realized immediately that that explained why you were getting all these therapeutic effects in the animal-assisted therapies that were just being mentioned. And I'm going back now, I'm going way back to Gene to 17 years ago. The information was coming out, the mute were speaking, you know, I mean, it was incredible. These studies that um, uh, were being done, and uh, no 
nobody was asking why. And it was when one of the scientists who conducted these studies, some of these studies said to me, well, you know, we've shown heart rate comes down and blood pressure comes down. And I said, why? Oh, you know, unconditional love. I said, no, 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 no. That's a biological effect. What's the biological mechanism? And then I also started thinking about that unconditional love story. It isn't unconditional. You can't beat a dog and have a good bond. You, you know, it is conditioned, and that's the best part. It is chemically conditioned to show love and affection, releases oxytocin in the, the object of your affection, and it comes back and wells up in you, and it's this wonderful feedback system, and there you go. You're off to the races. It is, a, it is conditioned, and it is in its conditioning that its real strength exists and that we can tap into it and we can make it better and we can make it grow. That's how wolves became dogs, is somebody kick-started, and the dog, a wolf had just as much to do with it as the human, kick-started that feedback system. And it was somebody who had enough oxytocin going in their brain that looked out on that Pleistocene tundra and saw horses and said, even though they were the number one meal ticket, that is what we ate mostly, said, you know, that might not just be dinner. I think I, I, think I could ride that horse. I think I could approach that animal of fight or flight and get close enough to it, calm it, and get on its back. That's a pretty amazing leap of faith. And somebody had to be looking very closely to see that. So there's a case where something that was always dinner became not dinner because somebody looked closely enough at it and saw it could be something else. Maybe someday that will be what is going on on our farms, that we will not have, you know, we will not be looking at animals merely as dinner. And that's the work that you've been doing. You, it happened. It has happened. It, it will happen again. Again, it's the quality of attention. And oxytocin makes you focus, makes you see and understand and look more deeply and see. And this is the other thing I want to mention that it does. It improves our social recognition. Three scientific terms, social recognition. Social recognition means I meet you last night. And I say, we talk, blah, blah, blah. This is it. I recognize you the next day I say hello. It doesn't seem like much. It's the most simple form of cognitive advancement. It's called associative learning. It doesn't seem like much. Without it, no society can happen. If I cannot remember who you are, I never saw you before, I can never develop a relationship. If you give rats, if you genetically engineer rats so they can't make oxytocin, they will ne every day is Groundhog Day, because that's sort of a rodent you know, mix that with it. But they will never remember meeting each other again and again. What you are doing is social recognition, recognition is not just seeing another and saying, I remember you. It builds a sense of kinship. It's seeing other as self. It's what mothers do. When that baby comes out, it doesn't necessarily look like you. But if they can't see it as them, they won't care for it. So it's this very basic form of, of, of learning, and it's what you're trying to do when you are going out and saying to people, a chicken is not a stupid animal that you, or, you know, that, that doesn't suffer, and you can do anything you want to. I, I come here from the Delmarva Peninsula. Believe me, I feel their pain. So raising social recognition of, is, is your job, is to make people see these animals as kin, because they are. And there's this powerful chemistry that if you allow it to happen, and it's, it's a spark that if you nurture it in, in your children, if you nurture it in yourselves, you can come to no other conclusion, in fact. And that's what you're trying to do, and I applaud you, and um, I won't, I want to take questions, and, and I don't know how much time I have. I want to take questions.